cold, cold winter's night in a cottage in the country tucked away beneath the hills a little boy lay sleeping snow began to fall lightning first and then with giant flakes which started to settle on the ground at first light of morning the little boy turned over he yawned and he sat up he ran to the window and looked out. Everything was covered in snow. The garden, the fields, the distant hills. He got dressed as fast as he could. When he was ready, he hurried down the stairs.
In the middle of the night, he woke up. He tiptoed to the window and peered down at the snowman, shivering. He went back to bed, but then the clock woke him up again. This time he got up and tiptoed down the stairs, feeling cold. He looked at the snowman through the glass panels on the front door, and suddenly, while the boy was looking at him, Snowman moved. Then he actually started to walk towards the boy. He tipped his hat and walked forward again, right up to the boy. They shook hands. Come in, said the boy. I'd love to, said the snowman. Together they tiptoed into the living room. Snowman thought it was wonderful. He looked at a cat sleeping peacefully by the fire and wanted to stroke it. The cat saw the snowman and was terrified. He left him in the air, the snowman jumped backwards, lurched into the Christmas tree, setting all the little bells ringing, candles shaking, and the fairy wobbling. At last it settled down, and the boy plucked in the tree. The tree lit up with every color you could think of. Blues and greens, reds and yellows, gold and silver. Then the snowman walked away from the Christmas tree and sat down in a comfortable armchair. The boy turned on the television. There was nothing but fuzzy lines and zigzags. It made the snowman dizzy. Then with a start, the boy realized the snowman was sitting too near the fire. He realized he might melt if he got too hot. So he pulled him out of the chair and hurried him out of the room. Into the kitchen which was cold and dark. The boy reached for the light switch. The snowman was curious. He wanted to switch it on himself. The snowman plodded over to the kitchen sink. The boy climbed up and turned on the cold water. And then the hot one as well. A big cloud of steam rose up. Steam, that was too hot for the snowman. fruit from the bowl, a cup of an orange for the nose, then a banana. And a cherry. And then a huge pineapple. But his own tangerine fit best, so he put it back on. Lean down.
Then he looked into the wardrobe, saw all the clothes hanging there, some hats. He tried on one. Then he tried on some trousers, but the braces caught over his nose. Be careful, said the boy. We mustn't wake up my parents. A bottle of perfume stood on the dressing table. Snowman wanted to try it. And he liked it. He did it again. Suddenly the perfume made him want to want to sneeze. He held his nose. He wasn't sneeze in the bedroom. The boy hurried him out of the room. And then out in the hallway, the snowman sneezed. In the boys' playroom was a music box. They wound it up and they danced to the music. Climbed out of the freezer 
take the little boy out of the garage, took him by the hand, they started running across the garden, faster and faster, bounding and jumping, until suddenly they were flying.
Memphis led the boy in the snowman to a stable. Lights fell through the door. And inside, they could see the reindeer which Father Christmas used to pull his sleigh. Then Father Christmas gave the boy a gift. It was a lovely blue scarf. He put it on. Now it was time for them to go. The snowman gripped the boy by the hand, and once again they started to run. Father Christmas had given him. It was still there. 